In mathematical logic, Goodstein's theorem is a statement about the natural numbers, proved by Reuben Goodstein in 1944, which states that every Goodstein sequence eventually terminates at zero. Kirby and Paris showed that it is unprovable in Peano arithmetic. This was the third example of a true statement that is unprovable in Peano arithmetic. After Godel's incompleteness theorem and Gerhard Jensen's 1943 direct proof of the unprovability of epsilon zero induction in Peano arithmetic, the Paris Harrington theorem was a later example. Lawrence Kirby and Jeff Paris introduced a graph theoretic Hydra game with behavior similar to that of Goodstein sequences. The Hydra is a rooted tree, and a move consists of cutting off one of its heads to which the hydra responds by growing a finite number of new heads according to certain rules. Kirby and Paris proved that the hydra will eventually be killed, regardless of the strategy that Hercules uses to chop off its heads, though this may take a very long time. Hereditary base N notation Goodstein sequences are defined in terms of a concept called hereditary base N notation. This notation is very similar to usual base n positional notation, but the usual notation does not suffice for the purposes of Goodstein's theorem. In ordinary base n notation, where n is a natural number greater than 1, an arbitrary natural number m is written as a sum of multiples of powers of n, where each coefficient i satisfies 0 i less than n, and act 0, for example, in base 2, thus the base 2 representation of 35 is 100,011, which means 25 plus 2 plus 1. Similarly, 100 represented in base 3 is 10,201. Note that the exponents themselves are not written in base n notation. For example, the expressions above include 25 and 34. To convert a base n representation to hereditary base n notation, first rewrite all of the exponents in base n notation, then rewrite any exponents inside the exponents, and continue in this way until every number appearing in the expression has been converted to base n notation. For example, while 35 in ordinary base 2 notation is 25 plus 2 plus 1, it is written in hereditary base 2 notation as using the fact that 5 equals 22 plus 1. Similarly, 100 in hereditary base 3 notation is Goodstein sequences. The Goodstein sequence G of a number M is a sequence of natural numbers. The first element in the sequence G is M itself. To get the second G, write M in hereditary base 2 notation, change all the 2s to 3s, and then subtract 1 from the result. In general, the n plus first term G of the Goodstein sequence of M is as follows. Take the hereditary base n plus 1 representation of G, and replace each occurrence of the base n plus 1 with n plus 2 and then subtract 1. Note that the next term depends both on the previous term and on the index n. Continue until the result is zero, at which point the sequence terminates. Early Goodstein sequences terminate quickly. For example, G terminates at the sixth step. Later Goodstein sequences increase for a very large number of steps. For example, GA056193 starts as follows. Elements of G continue to increase for a while, but at base, they reach the maximum of, stay there for the next steps, and then begin their first and final descent. The value 0 is reached at base. However, even G doesn't give a good idea of just how quickly the elements of a Goodstein sequence can increase. G increases much more rapidly, and starts as follows. In spite of this rapid growth, Goodstein's theorem states that every Goodstein sequence eventually terminates at zero, no matter what the starting value is. Proof of Goodstein's theorem Goodstein's theorem can be proved as follows. Given a Goodstein sequence G, we construct a parallel sequence P of ordinal numbers which is strictly decreasing and terminates. 
then g must terminate too, and it can terminate only when it goes to zero. A common misunderstanding of this proof is to believe that g goes to zero because it is dominated by p. In fact, the fact that p dominates g plays no role at all. The important point is, g exists if and only if p exists. Then if p terminates, so does g, and g can terminate only when it comes to zero. More precisely, each term p of the sequence p is obtained by applying a function f on the term g of the Goodstein sequence of m as follows. Take the hereditary base n plus 1 representation of g, and replace each occurrence of the base n plus 1 with the first infinite ordinal number omega. For example g equals 3 equals 21 plus 20 and p equals f equals omega 1 plus omega 0 equals omega plus 1. Addition, multiplication and exponentiation of ordinal numbers are well defined. The base changing operation of the Goodstein sequence when going from g to g does not change the value of f, thus after the minus 1 operation p will be strictly smaller than p, for example, hence is strictly greater than. If the sequence g did not go to zero, it would not terminate and would be infinite would always exist. Consequently, p also would be infinite would always exist too. But p is strictly decreasing and the standard order less than on ordinals is well founded, therefore an infinite strictly decreasing sequence cannot exist. Or equivalently, every strictly decreasing sequence of ordinals does terminate. This contradiction shows that g terminates, and since it terminates, goes to 0 equals 0. By construction of p we have that p equals 0. While this proof of Goodstein's theorem is fairly easy, the Kirby-Paris theorem, which shows that Goodstein's theorem is not a theorem of Peano arithmetic, is technical and considerably more difficult. It makes use of countable non-standard models of Peano arithmetic. What Kirby showed is that Goodstein's theorem leads to Jensen's theorem, i.e., it can substitute for induction up to epsilon zero. Extended Goodstein's theorem. Would the sequence still terminate? More generally, let b1, b2, b3, be any sequences of integers. Then let the n plus first term g of the extended Goodstein sequence of m be as follows. Take the hereditary base Bn representation of G, and replace each occurrence of the base Bn with Bn plus 1 and then subtract 1. The claim is that this sequence still terminates. The extended proof defines P equals F n as follows. Take the hereditary base Bn representation of G, and replace each occurrence of the base Bn with the first infinite ordinal number omega. The base changing operation of the Goodstein sequence when going from G to G still does not change the value of F. For example, if Bn equals 4 and if Bn plus 1 equals 9, then, hence the ordinal is strictly greater than the ordinal sequence length as a function of the starting value. The Goodstein function is defined such that is the length of the Goodstein sequence that starts with n. The extreme growth rate of can be calibrated by relating it to various standard ordinal indexed hierarchies of functions, such as the functions in the Hardy hierarchy and the functions in the fast-growing hierarchy of Lobb and Weiner. Kirby and Paris proved that, has approximately the same growth rate as, more precisely, dominates for every, and dominates Cishon showed that, where is the result of putting n in hereditary base 2 notation and then replacing all to s with omega. Kai Serdo showed that if with then, some examples, application to computable functions. Goodstein's theorem can be used to construct a total computable function that Peano arithmetic cannot prove to be total. The Goodstein sequence of a number can be effectively enumerated by a Turing machine, thus the function which maps n to the number of steps required. For the Goodstein sequence of n to terminate is computable by a particular Turing machine. This machine merely enumerates the Goodstein sequence of n and, when the sequence reaches zero, returns the length of the sequence. Because every Goodstein sequence eventually terminates, this function is total. But because Peano arithmetic does not prove that every Goodstein sequence terminates, 
Pino arithmetic does not prove that this Turing machine computes a total function. Bibliography. Goodstein. On the Restricted Ordinal Theorem. Journal of Symbolic Logic 9. 33-41, DOI, 10.2307, 2,268,019, JSTOR 2,268,019, Cishon, a short proof of two recently discovered independence results using recursive theoretic methods, Proceedings of the American Mathematical Society 87. 704-706, DOI, 10.2307, 2,043,364, JSTOR 2,043,364, Caicedo, Goodstein's Function, Revista Colombiana de Matemáticas 41, 381-391.